So today's cardinal lesson, we're talking about the solvency of Social Security. And my sense is most of you have heard about this stuff in the news, and that's unfortunately your only source of information about it. And there's a general acceptance that Social Security is going broke and they're going to be out of money by 2035. So what's the use? And all the news you heard about a month ago, six weeks ago, if you're listening to this thing live, uh, back in May of uh, 2022, there the trustees report came out. And so what the trustees report is, is it's law that the people that are responsible for managing the Social Security Trust Fund have to make a report to Congress. And that report is done by accountants. I mean, this thing is accurate. It, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's to the penny. Um, and some of these things that these conspiracy theories that people tend to believe, like uh, Obama spent this on other things and paid for the government. Trump spent it on uh, other things and financed some other part of the government. They're just not true. I mean, if you take the time to read this report, as Tom and I do um, each, each year, uh, we look forward to this. I mean, we don't read word for word all 275 pages of it, but we go through and read it. And I, you know, I get very upset when I read all these articles. And it's real apparent to me that the reporter or the writer who's sponsoring the article, who's writing it, and both the person that they're interviewing or the people that are so-called experts, they've just read other articles. They haven't actually looked at this report objectively. And so that's what we've done. And we're not going to go through the whole report today, but I'm going to pull out some key findings in there to just prove that this stuff is just not true, especially in the absolute sense. So what I want to do is I want to take you, bring Tom into the picture, and Tom is going to show you where you can get a copy of this report yourself if you want to go in and look at uh, what all backs up, I'm going to be going through with you next. Yeah. And so one thing we started doing on our new videos is having show notes. And you can actually find those on a link in the video description below. Um, you can also go to our website and they're located there. But I'm going to take you to um, the show notes right now and show you what they look like on our website once you click on the document. And so you can see there's a copy of the board um, sort of with a description of what we're going over. Um, this is useful. A lot of people will print this out and actually have it with them when they're watching the video just as reference. So they can maybe look at it, review it. Behind that is going to be the actual Social Security um, report that's released annually. And so we do this every year, um, but you can find this on our website. Um, I'm going to scroll down kind of through the preliminary uh, pages here, and then we're going to get to page seven of the document that goes over kind of a summary of what Hans is going to look at here in a second in the video and give you a little more context around. So let me blow this up some. I do know this is just a reference. So, I, you know, it might still look a little small on your end. But again, you can find these on our website. Um, some of the points that I want to want to make here is, you know, we get a lot of clients coming in that are talking about that, you know, this idea that Social Security is going to run out of money. And so therefore, I should take it as early as, as I can. Um, I have a, a, a good family friend who I've had this conversation with them many times because at some point back in their, you know, when they were in high school, their professor told them it was going to be out of money by the time they retired. Well, they're about to retire or they're getting close and it's not out of money, but they're still convinced it's going to. And, and my fear is they're going to make bad decisions on around Social Security because of that. Um, the other point I just want to make on this is there have been studies done and it's about 40 percent of our seniors in our country rely solely on social security for their income. I mean, 100% of their income is from social security. So just from a societal standpoint, I just, it's hard for me to believe that the government is gonna let this, you know, run out of money at some point in the future and just leave them without the income they need to support themselves. And so I think there's a lot of reasons that, that I just find it hard to believe that it's gonna, we're gonna get there. And then Hans is going to walk through coming to some, some of the numbers to back up that just idea there. But the real point of this video is to 
when we're making decisions, make them with facts, make them with, you know, good consideration and not just based off of what a friend told you, what you heard in an article or, you know, just common wisdom. And then, you know, you push people on common wisdom and it's, it's, you know, they heard it from somebody else. And so we just want to give some, some um, context around this report. Yeah. I mean, people that have already made up their minds, Tom, we're not, we're not real successful at changing them. And I, I guess I'm not going to try to do that today. So if you're grounded in these theories, I mean, the rest of what I'm going to go over is probably not going to mean that much to you. But if I had to pull out one number out of this whole board, okay, and, and just if I, if I look through the whole report, 275 pages, I pulled out one number, it would be that the end of last year or the beginning of this year, we started with almost $3 trillion dollars in the social security trust fund. So let's take, I mean, that's money that's set aside. It's in government bonds and it's an asset to the good. So social security is solvent to the standpoint that they're $3 trillion ahead of things. Okay. And the national debt is around 30 trillion, somewhere in that zone. And that's about 10% of the, national debt is actually an asset of the federal government and the social security system, almost 3 trillion bucks. So let's take that and take note of that. That's how much money social security has in the bank. And that money sits there to pay off future obligations. It's kind of like an insurance company's reserves, but this is a mighty big insurance company. Okay. So that's a number that I want you to grab onto. Um, during the next number that's important is we spent or the social security system and the social security trust fund spent $56 billion of that 2.8 trillion or about 2% of our trust fund or of our future money was spent last year making up the shortfall. So you know, 56 billion is concerning, but it just lowered the thing by 56 trillion. So I don't particularly like that, but that doesn't mean that it's going broke. There's still almost 3 trillion bucks in there. Now let's go through and see what happened financially with social security during 2021. So the social security checks that were paid to recipients totaled 1.133 trillion. So that's about a little more than a third of the trust fund was paid out to recipients. Okay. And then they also spent $6 billion running the whole system. So social security has to account for financially, they have to pay their own bills. Um, for the people in the government and all the systems to administer Social Security, six billion, and then somewhere in there, there's about five billion of expense because the railroads historically are mixed in and kind of separate. We won't worry about that too much. And you know, the the, the total expenditures last year of the whole Social Security system, including administration, was uh, one point one trillion dollars. Okay. And a little more than a third of the trust fund. Okay. Now let's look at the revenue or the money that social security took in to pay out those benefits. Okay. The benefits or the checks were 1.1 trillion. So the payroll taxes that they collected from you and me and everybody that's working $980 billion. So the the, the taxes that are paid by us now were almost enough to pay all the social security checks. But, you know, obviously we had the shortfall. So, but that's revenue that comes into social security. So when you have that tax deducted from your paycheck and it's 6.2% and then your employer matches the 6.2% and you add all of that up all over the United States, $980 billion. Now, interest on the trust fund. So those bonds 
where all that 2.8 trillion is sitting are invested in bonds and the interest was 70 billion. Okay, the $70 billion is uh, just interest and that goes to pay benefits. So you could look at this a different way that the, the, the social security checks, about 6% of them were paid out of the interest on the trust fund. Okay, so that's helpful. Um, then the taxation on the benefits, which is something we've talked about in a lot of other videos, if you have a lot of other income or average other income or whatever you want to call it outside of Social Security, that's what they use to figure out how much taxes you pay on your Social Security check. So when you add up through the whole system, $37 billion is how much the Social Security system or the federal government took in in income taxes on the so just the Social Security benefits. That taxation goes right through the federal government and right in to the books of Social Security. So that paid out, you know, a little more than 3% of the Social Security checks last year was just people that earn a lot of other money or an average amount of other money besides Social Security are just turning around and giving it right back to the system. And a lot of people don't understand how that works. So the net intake of the Social Security system last year was a little over a trillion dollars. And that's when you add all this stuff up and you plug it in, you came out with a $56 billion shortfall, which is concerning. I'd much rather we be adding money to the trust fund and not draining the trust fund, okay? Um, even if it is just 2%. So the, the thing is, is, is what they've done in this report buried somewhere in there, and it starts at the beginning and then it's buried in the, the logic behind it, is they have actuaries that work for the social security system that plug all these numbers in and then they make predictions of the future based upon population, working, earnings history, inflation, the inflation benefits are given. There's all kinds of variables. And what they say is, is if we change nothing in how we administer the system and we just allow this use of the trust fund to just go on like it is, then in 2035, this $3 trillion or almost $3 trillion is just going to be gone. I mean, that's, that's the conclusion. And again, if I go back to the press, which writes the articles about this stuff, they generally interview somebody in these articles or a couple of somebody. And many times they interview people like me. Um, sometimes they go to these research institutes and talk about people that maybe, and they've done all the math and they've read the report, probably not real thoroughly like an accountant or a financial manager, but they've, they've just bought into this without reading all the facts. And they just say, yeah, it's going broke. We better do something about it. And um, then it goes to Congress and the, both parties, both sides grandstand on this and say, yeah, it's the other guys that don't want to do anything. We want to do something. This thing's going to go broke. And what it leaves is customers, clients, you sitting there just believing this is the common wisdom. This may be the only place that you're going to hear there might be another side of the story. Now, I want to take the clock back to the 1980s, and Ronald Reagan campaigned on this, and um, they, they just came out with this problem was presented to him and the budget writers and all that kind of stuff, and they said they were then predicting we were going to run out of money about now. So that's probably what family member that Tom was talking to was referring to somebody was looking at those predictions back in the eighties and said, by the time he retires or she retires, they'll be out of money. But what they did is they moved the retirement age from 65 to 67 or the full retirement age. And that is, that was passed in the eighties. And that is not fully implemented yet. I mean, it, it's going to take, a couple, three, four more years before that 
the retirement age is fully moved to age 67. And that had a huge difference. I mean, it's really why we're where we are today. The second thing that they did is they started taxation of Social Security benefits. Before, before the 80s, they weren't taxed at all. And they came up with what is now $37 billion that came in in taxes. So that was started back then, and it's going on today. Now, what I'm going to tell you is if we use something this simple of to make this zero, we only need to come up with another, you know, 2% of revenue um, in payroll taxes. I mean, there's, there's some, some small changes will cause this thing to get balanced and carry it well into the future. And the only problem with those are those are tough choices. I mean, we're going to either have to increase Social Security taxes or payroll taxes or increase the percentage, figure out some way to get more coming in. Or we're going to increase the taxes that well-to-do people have to pay on their Social Security, something I'm not really in favor of doing that. I'm not in favor of any of this stuff, but uh, the problem's here to be solved, and we're going to have to do it one way or another. So we're either going to have to increase the taxes on the people that have sufficient income, um, or we're going to have to raise the retirement age again, perhaps like from 67 to 70. That doesn't mean people can't retire and get a check at 67 or 65. It just means that they're going to get less than they other would have if they waited till 70. Um so, you know, I don't like any of this stuff or some combination of the three, um, plus anything else they can think of. Um, but I don't like the grandstanding on this, and I don't like the conclusions that people draw, because where this brings in a problem, and it, 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 it just creates a problem um, for us being in the retirement planning business, is clients come in here, just like Tom talked about, where... They're just saying, what's the use? This is going to, you know, Social Security is going broke anyhow. And that's the first subject we cover in the retirement plans that people hire us to put together for them is we're going to use the Social Security check as the base money. And so immediately they're going to say, oh, well, you know, that's not going to be there. So let's not plan on that. And it just kind of undermines everything we're doing. And the loser in that is you if you buy into all this. So. I think what's going to happen is um, they're probably not going to do anything for a while because the current problem is not that serious. And, you know, Washington has really demonstrated that they're not going to address a problem until it really is clunking them over the head. So we're going to probably have to have a year where the jabbing of the trust fund is a little higher than that. But I think we, we certainly have some time and I'd like to see them act right away, but um, they're going to need to do that. And Social Security is not going broke. It isn't going away. You can count on it. Um, maybe if you're a well-to-do person, maybe you can count on getting less because you'll be giving it back through taxes. So I'm not doing this video to get you like any of this. I'd just like you to look at the other position and just see that a lot of this stuff that's accepted as fact is partially true, but in summary, it's not totally true. So I'd like to bring Tom back on and uh, let him see if he has some final thoughts of some things he wants to say. Yeah, I mean, I think clearly there is currently a problem that's out there and it's known. It's not, we're not saying there isn't something that needs to be done, but I think to go to the extreme to say, oh, it's, you know, throw up your hands and say, it's not gonna be there. I'm gonna take it as early as I can people end up making poor decisions um, and we don't need to get into the details, but one I've seen a lot is people don't even know what's called an earnings test, where if you're under your full retirement age and you're still working, if you take social security, you might just turn around and pay it all back because you have too high of an income. And so you absolutely do not want to take it while you're still working if you're under your full retirement age. So that is just one example of a decision that is oftentimes made because they're worried about all these things on the side of the board, 
but they just miss something that's real important that they don't even know about. And so, you know, when you're making this decision, you know, you can't undo it within the first year that you take it. But, it, you know, after that point, you've really signed up for this decision for the rest of your life. So really think through these decisions around Social Security, because this is going to serve as the base income for your retirement. Yeah. So and I would encourage you, if you're listening to some other source, and you're really you ask yourself the question or ask them, have they read this report that's on our website? Okay. And I'm not suggesting that you go read the whole report, but it's there. And I would like to think that an expert that's writing an article or quoting on that would it would at least take a little time to go through the report and see these numbers. Because when you just look at the numbers, it's just not as serious as people think that it is. And with that, I'm Hans Scheil, and I thank you very much for listening. And I'm Tom Griffith. Thank you.